Hey guys, Can here. Hope you're all doing fine. Uh, so PS5 is on the way and everybody's really excited about the new features that Sony have to offer and we all want to know if it's going to be a strong console made for gaming or uh, Xbox Series X is actually going to be a much faster and much better console made for gaming. So um, that's why I decided to do a quick comparison in this video and in terms of gameplay and specs and just to know that um, just to find out that which is the strongest console uh, made for gaming when it comes to in terms of like gameplay and specs and all that so so we're gonna start with the specs first and um, uh, the first one is CPU where PS5 have AMD Zen 2 octa-core processor clocked at 3.5 gigahertz um, in Xbox Series X they also have a AMD Zen 2 octa-core processor clocked at 3.8 gigahertz so in CPU, with a minor difference, um, Xbox Series X clock speed is slightly higher than PS5. Uh, one thing you all know that these are maximum clock speed, so mostly they will be running at less clock speed. Uh, so it's going to be other factors collectively too, which will decide the performance of the gameplay. So the next one is GPU, where PS5 had 10.28 teraflops with 36 computing units running at 2.23 gigahertz, and Xbox have 12 teraflops with 52 computing units running at 1.825 gigahertz now this is the tricky part because xbox series x have better specs the ps5 can run at high clock speed which explains if you have watched this wild video online with spider-man in which sony are comparing the loading time and graphic transition between ps4 pro and ps5 uh, you can see a massive difference between because of the ps5 higher gpu clock speed So storage wise PS5 have 825 gigahertz solid state hard drive. Um, a very awkward number for SSD and Xbox Series X have 1 terabyte also SSD hard drive. Um, now by looking at the numbers you guys must be thinking that Xbox Series X have more storage which is true. But guess what? PS5 hard drive is way faster than Xbox Series X hard drive which makes a huge impact. Uh, on overall performance, especially with the games like Spider-Man or any other fast motion games. Uh, Sony have described that their first priority while building PS5 was to have super fast SSD, which they achieved by having speed up to 5.5 GB per second. Which I think is insane, like, in, I mean, we all know that solid state hard drives are really super fast, but uh, having a speed up to 5.5 GB per second, this is something. I'm really impressed on that so if Sony can actually achieve that this would be a big thing. Um, so in Xbox Series X you will get up to 2.4 GB per second raw which doubles to 4.8 GB per second when the console uses compression. So technically speaking PS5 SSD is going to have constant speed of 5.5 GB per second which makes it more faster than Xbox Series X SSD. Uh, now there can be a small problem with the storage when it comes to storing games on PS5 uh, which you won't be able to have more than few games on internal storage but you can always have external hard drives uh, but the speed of external hard drive won't be as fast as the those Xbox specially designed external hard drives which I explained in my last video uh, very briefly in case if you haven't watched that I'm gonna leave the link in description uh, on the top with the PS5 hard drive, so in case if you want to get an external hard drive, you can have third party external hard drive, so there is no issue with that. But again, the speed is going to be not as fast as the internal storage. And with the Xbox uh, hard drives, external hard drive, they have their own specially designed hard drive, so you need to stick with them. So the next one is RAM, which in both consoles you will get 16 gigs, but both consoles are using different approach in terms of RAM. So first of all they're going to have different memory bandwidth and different interface configuration. Uh, so I'm going to explain the PS5 first because it's more simple to explain. So PS5 DDR6 RAM have 256 bit memory interface with memory bandwidth clocks in at 448GB per second which is much faster than PS4 DDR5 8GB RAM which clocks in at 176GB per second. 
The PS5 performance uh, in terms of RAM is very easy to understand. Now things get really tangled in Xbox Series X as Microsoft is using totally different approach when it comes to RAM. So the Xbox Series X DDR6 RAM have 320-bit memory interface but they are splitting RAM between 10 gigs running at 560 gigabytes per second and 6 gigs running at 336 gigabytes per second. Now the reason of doing this is to prioritize 10 gigs RAM with much higher speed than PS5 for GPU and the remaining 6 gig RAM for other less processor functions uh, which I think is very clever. So for GPU functions you can have super fast RAM and for like CPU background functions you can have rested RAM at slower speed which you don't need much because mostly it's gonna be like is the GPU which needs more RAM so they are prioritizing in that way in the sense like you will get more RAM for uh, the main function what you need for uh, in terms of gameplay and other stuff and in the background like in CPU you can have all the background stuff going on so uh, this is the approach is talk it's completely different approach uh, used by the Microsoft in terms of RAM so we can see that how it's gonna work out so I think I have a good hopes on this one I think it's gonna work out well because uh, on the top first of all you have like super fast RAM I mean although you don't have 16 gigs super fast like altogether but still you have 10 gigs of super fast RAM which can work much better as compared to PS5 console so that's a good thing uh, next one is the uh, ray tracing which is a big thing now we have seen in the new console so the both machines will use ray tracing uh, it's a tech you will mostly find in very expensive gaming PC it calculates the exact path of each ray of um, uh, light as it passes through transparent objects or bounces or of the reflective surface to give super realistic lightning uh, and this improves the graphics as well so especially with the games like um, any normal games or even um, I think one of the videos was circulating online of Minecraft which they show a video of uh, uh, Minecraft gameplay with the um, ray tracing and the one video without ray tracing and there was a huge difference between these two in terms of graphics or uh, all the lightning effect uh, so I think that's gonna be also a big improvement uh, so in both consoles you can have that uh, technology so which is a good thing um, in terms of audio they are using slightly different approach like so Sony is offering 3d audio which can uh, which will um, which will give you very realistic sound effect uh, in terms of gameplay so you guys must be wondering that you might need like big massive speakers or like good sound bars or uh, any of the good sound systems to have that 3d sound effect so uh, the good news is that you can just have like decent headphones and you can just have a really good 3d sound effect that's all you need so once you have a decent pair of headphones you're good to go on that so that is a good thing now Microsoft is using audio ray tracing which uses the graphics to trace the audio so it improves the audio as well it's not exactly like 3d audio but still I think it's gonna be a big improvement in audio in terms of Xbox so they have also like so this time we can actually see in both console they have not that they also make improvement in the graphics but there's also we can see improvement happening in the audio as well um, but again I think from my opinion I think 3d audio sounds really great I mean I can't wait to see that's how it's gonna look like and uh, uh, especially with the 3d sound effect I, th I think it's gonna be most realistic uh, gameplay experience you can um, have in PS5 both consoles are going to be HDMI 2.1 and they will use all the features of HDMI 2.1 and you'll be able to play games up to 120Hz in both consoles, which is great. So in terms of backward compatibility, uh, Sony has stated that PS5 will be able to play most of the PS4 games, which I think you might not be able to play all of the PS4 games. Um, on the other side, Microsoft has stated that you'll be able to play four generations of game on the newest console, which means that uh, your Xbox One X game, One S, Xbox 360, or even the old Xbox One, um, sorry, the Xbox games will be able to play on the newest console uh, with the upscaling as well on the top. So it will also improve the graphic quality uh, on the newest console, which is great. Uh, so I think there is a huge improvement uh, in terms of backward compatibility, and I think Microsoft is way ahead compared to Sony on that. So 
so the price while speaking there is no exact figure for the price but I suspect that it's gonna be around like $500 um, for both consoles but again like if you guys are wondering that the price is too much uh, Imagine having exactly same specs for a gaming PC. You're looking at about like between $1,000 to $1,500, which is a lot of money for a gaming PC. So uh, I think to have like a top end spec uh, in a console for that kind of price, like around $500, that's not bad. Overall speaking, we can say that in terms of GPU and solid state hard drive, PS5 seems to have an upper hand, and in terms of CPU and RAM, Xbox seems to be like taking over. So. I think it's going to be a matter of PlayStation fans sticking with the PlayStation and Xbox fans sticking with the Xbox and obviously nobody cares about the PC gamers, I'm joking. Uh, but I think it's going to be a, a really tough competition between these two. So that's pretty much and I hope you like this review and if you have any questions about this video you can leave in the comments and I'll be happy to answer that. And uh, again I just want to mention one more thing that your support is very important and to keep supporting me in making videos like this please like my video and subscribe my channel and thanks for watching.